All right, the people who don't know me, I'm Chris Maynard. I'm a professional technician, technologist. And I'm an honorary member of, uh, honorary fellow of IPET, Institute of Professional Engineering Technologists. I'm also a member of SAT, Society of Asphalt Technology, and also a member of SAISI, which is a South African Institute of Civil Engineers. I'm also an ex assessor, moderator, and interviewer. And this is brought to you by IPET, the Institute of Professional Engineering Technologists. And it is at the website is www.ipet.org.za. Today, we're going to do toolbox number 10. For this year, it's group C. We're going to discuss that. And now, we'll just go under the disclaimer. Please note, this we do at a free, uh, voluntary, uh, free service, and it's voluntary that we do it and that you take it at your own risk. Remember one thing, when you can do all this, but if you do not do your interview good, you can, uh, that is where the crux is. You must learn to do the interview. Okay, we can go to the next slide, you on. Okay, today we're discussing Group C, competency standards required for EXA registration. Now, I'm going to talk about this. I know some guys that were on the others, they will know where to get this information. There are people that do not know. So the first one is where do I find the information of group C? What is group C? What is outcome six, outcome seven, conclusion, and then there's the references. Next slide, Jan. Okay, where do we find the information? There are two documents required as a part of engineering council policy documents. These are two important ones, but it, the others are just as well important that you have to read through. So it's RO2 STAPE, which stands for Professional Engineer. PT is Professional Technologist. PCE is a Professional Certificate Engineer. And PN is a Professional Technician. It's a competency standards for registration in professional categories for PE, PT, PCE. PN, the latest is revision one. It was done in 20th of August, 2020. And now from now on, I will just refer to it as R02. Now R08PT is the guide of competency standard for registration as a professional engineering technologist, referred to as R08. So please, we will talk about these two are very important. They will help you with your registration. Now the website link is is www.exa.co.za and you can look under the folder of documents and then you go down to the page where it says technologist, technician or engineer, wherever you want to register. Next slide, Johan. Okay, this is now 3.32 of new registration for professional engineering technologists. I've highlighted R02 and R08. But these others are also very important to read through. And then also you need to know your application form for a professional engineering technologist. The Professional Engineering Technologist Guide to Completion of Registration Application Form, that is now off the website of the last saw, but it will be coming back. They're just updating it. Okay, next slide. Okay, what is Group C? Now, Group C means a risk and impact mitigation group. Now, what does this mean? The section, you must be able to demonstrate the following. Recognition of your obligation to society, the profession, and the environment. And commitment to abide by the professional code of conduct. So these are two of the most important ones. Your obligation to society, the profession, and the environment. And also, you must know your professional code of conduct. Now, Group C consists of the following. It's outcome six and outcome seven. So we're going to talk about, but before we talk about that, the important note, before attempting to complete the application, look in Excel's document order two. What is the definition and characteristics of a broadly defined engineering problem activity? That you will find on page 12 of this document. Okay, what is outcome six? Now, outcome six, what we have to do, we recognize and address, that is important, the reasonable, foreseeable, social, cultural, 
and environmental effects of a broadly defined engineering activity. Now, social is what you're doing for the community. Cultural, it might be there that you're doing something for the, you're not allowed to go and work on certain lands and that because it's culturally a sensitive area. Now, environment, while you're doing it, it doesn't matter what field you are, you are affecting the environment. So now 6.1, look at the word describe. That is important your ability to identify. So you're describing that. Your ability to identify the you know, social, cultural, and environmental effects. Then state what measures you have taken. So what does that mean? Is what the measures that you will see. Go to the next slide, Jan. You will see what it is. If you look there, describe your ability to identify interested and affected parties and their expectations in regard to interaction between technical, social, cultural, and environmental considerations. So if you look at that, you've got four items to discuss there. Technical, social, cultural, and environmental considerations and the interactions that you had. Now 6.2, state what measures you have taken to mitigate the negative effects of engineering activities. Doesn't matter what in activity you're doing, engineering, electrical, mechanical, civil, like I do, or any, you are going to have negative effect to the environment. How did you try and reduce it? That's what it means. Next one. Chris, this is an extract from the EXO application form, isn't it? That's correct. I do that now to explain to everybody that they can see where it is. Now, the performance requirements for outcome six. We just showed to discuss there. Now, performance requirements for outcome six is to recognize and address the technical, social, cultural, environmental, and long-term sustainability considerations for a broadly defined engineering activity. So that means you have to look at that. Then competency to be demonstrated. Who are the interested and affected parties? What are the expectations in relation to in relationship to interactions with technical considerations? So when you're designing, you take into consideration technical consideration. Then social considerations like work creation for the community. Are they going to get any um advantage if you do that design are you going to better their lifestyle their living conditions we won't talk about escom because it doesn't better our living conditions there at the moment now cultural consideration what if you take your design is it going to affect the cultural there for instance they've got uh, people a community have got a special tree are you going to go into the special tree or cut it down what is the impact then environmental consideration that you take into consideration. Are you going to pollute the area if you're doing sewage, for instance? How are you going to stop the sewage from going into the river to pollute the water? Then your long-term sustainability consideration. Are you going to design it just for two days or are you going to design it so that it can last for a longer period of 5, 10, 20 years, for instance? Now, what measures did you take to reduce the negative effect of the engineering activity? Now, this is where, for instance, you, you do a road. While you're building the road, what do you cause for the environment? How do you stop it for like dust control? That's one of the things. If you're doing chemical, if you're transporting chemicals, how do you stop it from minimizing it that it goes into a spillage? So these are the things. Now note, all these considerations are under the evaluating and planning tasks within your area of competency for a broadly defined engineering activity. But you must also be able to supply evidence for outcome six. What I mean by evidence is, can you talk about it? Can you show and show the competency that you did there? That's what it means by that. Okay, now outcome seven is there meet all legal and regulatory requirements and 
protect the health and safety of persons in the course of a broadly defined engineering activities. So you look at the key words, there's two criteria as marked, 7.1. State where you have identified and 7.3 says state in what circumstances you. So remember, it says state in both, but one is where, the other one is what. Next slide. Now, this comes out of EXA, as John asked. Now, it says outcome seven, meet all legal and regulatory requirements and protect the health and safety of persons in the course of his or her broadly defined engineering activities. Now, 7.1. State where you have identified applicable legal and regulatory requirements, including health and safety requirements for the engineering activity. Yeah, a lot of the applicants make the mistake of only talking about OHS, health and safety. You know, the Health and Safety Act. Don't just do that. Talk about others that you come across. If you're working with chemicals, what are the requirements for the? If you're doing civil, what are the requirements there for the site? If you're working with uh, electrical, what are the requirements? Find out and learn. You don't have to state where a 1940 XYZ Act. No, you state just the acronym and you say what it is and you must be able to explain what it is there for. Now, 7.2. State in what circumstances you assisted or demonstrated awareness of the selection of safe and sustainable materials and components and identify the risk and applied risk management strategies. So basically, this what it means is you do a, a, a what you call it, a risk a ma matrix, but also you also demonstrate by, for instance, if you're doing a road, and you had to import new material, but you saw the old material is good enough and it falls within the spec to use as a layer works, you are saving there. That is one of the examples. So, but it is also your risk management matrix that you will have to also discuss. Okay, and that's next slide, John. All right, performance requirements of outcome seven. Now it says meet all legal and regulatory requirements of a broadly defined engineering activity. Competency to be demonstrated. What are the legal requirements for the applicable engineering activity? Mechanical, electrical, and civil will not have the same legal requirements. Now is also you have to discuss regulatory requirements for engineering activity. Because the top one is an act, the other one is a regulation, the second one. And what are the health and safety requirements for the engineering activity? Usually, yeah, you discuss your OHS, your Health and Safety Act. That's what you do, and then you must be able to answer any questions on that. Okay, what standards are required for broadly defined engineering activity? This, what circumstances? These are the questions you must ask yourself. And what circumstances did you assist or demonstrate a selection of sustainable material that was a saving? And what risks did you identify and how did you apply risk management strategies to minimize the risk? This is risk uh, matrix you identify and that's how you save. Apply the risk management strategies. Next one. Next slide, Jan. Okay, now summary of performance requirements for outcome six and seven. Now to summarize, outcome six is where you plan and evaluate the broadly defined engineering activity and take into consideration of the effects of technical, which is your design. Social is the people that uplift the area. Cultural is what you do there. You don't go into the cultural land or ancestors land. And environmental is how did you mitigate that, not that it becomes an environmental disaster. And it is not over a short period, but a long-term sustainability effect it has on your area or the area that you're putting the item in. Also, outcome six is the negative environmental effects of a broadly defined engineering activity to be identified. And what's this done to minimize this 
effect on the environment. So please note, you, there it is done to minimize this effect on the environment. Okay, outcome seven is the legal and the regulatory requirements with the risks identified and what measures were taken to minimize these risks. Okay, Jan, next slide. Okay, acknowledgement. The presentation has been based on the Engineering Council of South Africa EXA documents, the RO2. I'm not going to read all that. And then your application form too. And there should also be the RO8, which is also there. But there's in if that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Before we go to next questions, the next presentation will be on group E about how to fill in group E. That's the ethics group. And your decision making and your responsible taking of your decisions. So now we've come to the end and there's any questions, but look at the if you want to look at these previous presentations, you can go to professionalcpd.co.za. Remember, there's no WW behind it. And this was brought to you with the compliments from Institute of Professional Engineering Technologists. And their website is www.ipit.org.za. Okay, thank you. And this is services that you can join. You can join the IPED Professional Registration Advice. This is on the WhatsApp group. And you can also join the free portal, I mean the job portal for free engineering job adverts. And then the IPED tutorials on professional registration and CPD. That is at the professional CPD there. And then I think that's about all then. All right, any questions? And then please note the disclaimer, and you got the iPad cell. Please take this number, 073-336-2471. This is to go to the job portal and the professional registration advice. When you do that, send a WhatsApp to that number, but please write your name behind. Johan isn't clairvoyant. He does not, uh, cannot see who it is. And he usually takes two, three days because he's not the whole day on the phone. Okay. And right. I don't now answer that to... phone. Please don't phone me on no. it. I don't keep it with me and I don't answer it. <laughs> but send a WhatsApp on that. Ask to be put on one of the groups. We'll do it. Maybe, maybe it'll take me a week to do it, but I'll do it eventually. Uh, I've got lots of other work to do as well. So uh, I don't always get around to it. But you're most welcome to use the um the the uh what's the name's the in, invitation to to go on to the groups yourself uh good i just want to go back to the uh disclaimer and put that on while um <clears throat> while adrian is telling us about international uh the international uh, uh, registration. If Adrian is still with us. Adrian, are you there? Yeah, sorry, I just uh, I went out and then I had to come back in. Um, but yeah, go for it. I, I would have missed, what was the question? Okay, how did you go about, just explain how you went about this one person that is what is it? Uh, what is his name? I just want to see you. Um, Muhibi, uh, am I right? Muhibi asked about how to go about your, um, how do you register internationally? So just explain that a bit there. What is the requirement? Your experience what, that, what huh? are the requirements for international registration, Adrian? I think it's more yeah. you, you have to have more experience than uh, than the three years and all that kind of thing. Uh, you first have to be registered as a beat, uh, as a professional technologist, and if I'm not mistaken, you have to have a further five years experience above that. Are you on? Yeah, it was it was something like that. Um, I think we could get to the finer details for the next session, but it, you, yeah, of course you would need that technologist registration or the, yeah, okay, the technologist or the PRNs or 
certified engineer, etc. Just as a matter of interest, before I go into the whole application, I see I've got now the title, it's PR dot techno, then space I N T E T and brackets SA. <laughs> I laugh because uh, I don't know. I've just added the PR tech engine as well. So the guys know what it, what, what it is. So, I, <laughs> but yeah, that's just me. I add them both together. You put um, it in the chat, the, please. The, I actually watched, I watched app you, uh, Johan. I've watched app that the, the letter I got. So yeah. on your WhatsApp. So I don't know oh. if you can copy and paste it for me. Mm -hmm. um, the actual application, the reason I, I, I did it was I noticed EXA was running a um, they were running a special, if I could put it to you like this now. They said the first 50 they'll do for free. So I do know there's a charge. I would assume there's a charge now because they would have had 50 people already applying. So I think no, they, they haven't. They, haven't. So they, they, uh, they jacked it up to 100 and still nobody applies for it. <laughs> so no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I was no, no, the like only, I was the <laughs> only one that did it, probably. <laughs> I think there's but, about uh, uh, about ten people that have applied, and they've asked me to do it, and I said, "Forget it, I'm not going for that interview." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Chris, you've already mentioned the requirements, so you've you pretty much got that one uh, uh, already mentioned. Then I noticed I I must still go back to it. It's a long time now that I did it. But it wasn't as much uh, to fill in as compared to your normal registration. I, there were still things to be done, like a summary of what you've done and et cetera. But I can have another look at it. But I, I recall when I went through it, it wasn't as much. Um, fortunately, it's not the whole full-blown uh, application. And then what did surprise me when they said, no, there's an interview, then I said, what have I got myself into now? I thought it was just going to be an application. So you have to go for the interview, do your presentation for 20 minutes. Then there's a panel of three or four people. And then they ask questions that took about, about an hour. Roughly I presented. And then next time I looked, it was an hour with talking through the questions, et cetera. And then it was fairly quickly after that, they confirmed that everything was all right. So yeah. I, Bottom line, that is it, the, the gist of it. I do like the idea that it has an international bearing to it. So to do international work, uh, this is an interesting discussion now. Do you need this to do international work? I'm assuming you can still use your technolog technologist registration and still do it. Although I was speaking to guys in Australia and um, they were quite positive, you know. So, um, and that's if you want to do online work, for example, I think it's it will be quite nice to have it. That was just my thinking. Uh, because nowadays the, the world is very small um, and sometimes work is scarce in South Africa. And then you got to look internationally. And when I say the world is so small is that you can do things online nowadays, uh, be on meetings and look at stuff. So... It, it would be good to look into. I've just assumed there's a, there's some favor on having this. That's why I went for it. Um, and then I'm exploring some options with that, doing work abroad as well. So, yeah, so that's my long and short of it. Um, over to you guys, Chris and Johan. I don't know if you want to add some more things to it. Um, okay. <clears throat> Can I just say one thing? Uh, it's nice to have that international registration but also we as PR Tech Eng in South Africa are also recognized the worldwide with certain accords and that too. So it's a nice to have if you want to do it, but there are, I don't want to do it for the reason because I'm near re retirement and if there's a hundred young people that can go and do it, they can go and do that for them to help because it's for free. That's okay. what I said there. Yeah. I'm glad you say that because I wasn't sure with just the registration I had if it was enough. Because no. uh, why why would there be another registration? That's why I thought I must just mm. go do it and get it done with and gives me another option. 
and it was for free at the time. It sounds like it's still it's still for free, which is quite a bonus. <laughs> it's quite a yeah. bonus. Um, but do yeah, I say I, that but, there's but a lot of guys? You know what? I want to tell you one thing about this. We do. I do the interviews, but I don't want to sit on the other side of the table because I know my colleagues are going to grind me. <laughs> <laughs> that do it also. But it's not that. It's As I explained, you know, I'm near retirement and there's younger guys that would like to do it. They can go and do it. And we keep the space open for them too. Yeah, I think as you say, I mean, if you are registered and you want to do it, if you're registered as mm -hmm. a technologist and you've got some experience behind you and it's for free at the same time. So I think it just adds something extra I mean, it's yeah. going to take some time. It took me, sure, it took me a while to write out the application, all of that. You had to get referees as well. Uh, so you had to get your three referees and then, of course, the interview. Um, but uh, I was quite impressed how quickly they did it. The, 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 when I got the feedback, I, it, it was only a few weeks. And then they got back to me and said the interview will be like the following week. The interview will be. So I was very impressed with that. I expected it to be a couple of months, but it wasn't. Um, so maybe there's a particular section that deals just with the, these international ones. So, yeah. Well, thanks, Adrian. Uh, that was very insightful. We've never discussed international registration before. And uh, I think we need to, uh, to talk about it more. But in any case, any other questions? A lot of you guys have joined us, and um, I know that you join because you have uh, you, you have questions about registration that you that you uh, trying to fill in your form. So you're welcome to ask any question. Uh, we'll try and answer it. And if we've we've answered the same question last week and the week before, fine, we answer it again because you mm. you haven't been here the last week or the week before, and, and, and mm. so. We accept that we that we answer to to great extent many of the questions uh, regularly, but usually there's some some uh, unique questions that comes come out as well. So please go ahead and uh, put up your hand, Michael. Unmute yourself and go for it. Hi there, guys. Sorry, man, I, I joined this discussion late. I don't know how far you into the discussion. I just got home from work now. But I, um, I, I was in one session some time back, uh, probably three, four months ago. Uh, uh, you know, I'm registered as a technician. I got the old, uh, but I want to upgrade my registration to the, to the technologist one. I've, yeah, I've done mine years ago. I've... Uh, did my national higher diploma years ago, and I think I got, I got it in 2001 or 2002. I'm getting old, I can't remember. Uh, you know, so my problem is I want to know how do I go about it? Uh, I, I last time I spoke, um, I think I, I don't know whether it was you or or the other, or um, your, I don't know which one's you are, or you, Johan, or the other one, Johan. <laughs> or you, and, and then. Um, you know, they said something about when I fill in the form, I don't have to fill in one section. I think it's either the TER or the TO section I have to fill in. I, I just tried to figure out why or, have I, or did I pick up, or did I get the wrong end of the stick? No, no, you didn't. Okay, let me explain. Uh, yeah. Okay, the, the TER is if you got your BTEC or you got it, uh, your advanced diploma. But now the TEO is if you're going through the alternative route, which you will most probably be going through, Michael, am I correct? Because you've yeah, got more I, I, than I, 10 years' experience after you got your diploma, which is fine. So you'll fill in your TEO there, which is your TEO. alternative route. Yes. And okay. you can only fill, you can, they say only fill in the last 10 years. So that helps a lot. You don't have to fill in, yes, of what the work that you were doing. Okay, what I was going to do is I, I chose a period in uh, since 2005 or 2006 till about uh, for about five, six years when I worked for a certain company in Cape Town. 
Um, I, I wrote up everything on the, on that thing. So you see, I need to write up more. Yeah, no, you must write up. But you see, what happens now is if you're going to write, uh, you're going to do your application for instance, you want to become now a professional technologist. Although yeah. you're a professional technician, there is a difference between the two. Yes. So because you're a professional technician, you're doing a well-defined engineering activity. A professional technologist is doing a broadly defined engineering activity. So you do your last 10 years from up to now and you work 10 years back. Oh, shit. Okay. That's, you know, uh... you can't choose, you know, you can't just choose one piece and say, okay, I did this. And then you say now you do now the short piece up to 2015. What did you do in the next seven years? We look at that. Yeah, I did quite a bit. The, the reason understand? I chose, sorry, mm -hmm. I'm sorry for breaking, but the reason I chose that period because I did quite a bit of varied work um, as far as design and construction go. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, and, and, and so I, I think it explains the, there's also a lot of construction and project management um, portions mm -hmm. in that period. And uh, I thought it just defines quite a bit of the work I've done. Yeah, what I'm saying is you can also go and take it maybe 15, 16, or even 20 years back. It's not a problem. But just remember, your report mustn't be so bulky that because, you know, when we are the assessors, we do this, we do this on a voluntary basis. So we don't get paid by EXA. So that's why they limit it to a certain uh, amount of pages in that and a certain yeah. amount of words. If you're going to write, for instance, something that is a paragraph that can be written in a paragraph of five or six sentences, now you're going to write a page and a half. We have to read through that. And, you know, we finish the yeah. day's work and that, and it gets tiring. Yeah, I understand it because uh, what I've read through the, the, how, the mm. how, basically how to answer, they said it mustn't put too much words, just as brief as possible, you know, and, and brief, but must be descriptive as well. Yeah, bullet and, form, mate. That's better yeah. for you to do it that way. That's correct. Okay, so, okay, I just have to like try and complete it then. But uh, the other thing, someone, I heard someone mentioned they're doing away with the, uh, with the, with the, with the BTEC, is that, am I correct? Yeah, that is correct. Uh, it's been, a, uh, there's been, a, a, what do you call it, uh, replaced with a new system with your advanced diploma. Mm. I mean, yeah, it's your advanced diploma, then you get your uh, B inch, tech inch, or your B tech inch, and there's another one, and all right, your B tech. Now, with the advanced diploma and the new system, you can actually go and learn further, and then you can actually become a professional engineer if you want to. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's why they brought it in there. But you can't, a lot of people say you can do an honors. You have to do it at a certain universities of technology to do an honors there that you can move over towards to become a PR eng. But I'm not, uh, you know, it's my opinion. I, I'm happy where I am now. I'm a professional technologist, and I like it that way. No, I, to, I, upgrade I, your, to upgrade your, your qualifications, you need to do the honours as well as the masters, and the specific masters uh, for, uh, for for becoming. And I haven't heard of anybody who's gone that route yet, but uh, apparently the route is available, and. Uh, but, but the, as you asked about the BTEC that's been discontinued, yes, the Department of Education forced us to, uh, well, they just uh, uh, cancelled the BTEC. And then we had to decide what to do to, to replace that. And then we brought in, we suggested the three-year uh, Bachelor of Engineering de uh, Technology degree uh, because people want a degree. And uh, that was accepted. It was a long story but it was accepted. But there's also the, to, to, to top up an ordinary diploma, they, they do the, the advanced diploma, which is a one year course, which is also bringing you to the same level. So your BTEC will still be recognized. That's the main thing. I mean, I've got an old national diploma from back from 72, and I've got a, uh, I've got a, a master's diploma in technology. Those qualifications, 
although I'm, uh, as you can see, uh, gone on a bit in years, um, uh, those qualifications are still recognized. But uh, there's so many different qualifications. As you say, you've got the higher diploma, which is the same as uh, vir virtually the same as my old national diploma from 1972. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it's the same level and the same uh, recognition. Uh, the thing is that it's still recognized. It's not, not recognized uh, for registration purposes and all that. Okay, thanks. So you did the T streams as well, eh? The T I did T1, the T4. T4. I, I look, I did the T4. That is my. Yeah. But I'm deciding now late to to upgrade my registration from technician to technologist, and that was my reason why I'm trying to figure out if anything's changed now. Whether I, whether I cannot upgrade to technologist, seeing that they're doing away with the B tech. No, or, no, no. You okay. can. I, I registered yeah. on the basis of my T4. I, I registered as a professional technologist before I had the master's diploma. So, oh, okay. uh, and I mean, by the time I had my master's diploma, I was already sitting on the registration committee. So, so no, don't worry. Okay. You can re still register on the basis of your T4. Okay. Yes. Now, thanks. That you know. So the so uh, but also what's also required. I've been reading that uh, once I've done the application form, submitted it. The, I have to have an interview eh? and 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 whatever and do a presentation as well. Is that still up? That's yes, still the that same. Yes, that's correct. Yes, that's still the same. Yeah. Okay. So you do you do a fifteen minute uh, presentation and then you be interviewed on your presentation and what is in your report. Basically, what we do is we want to find out is that your report and are you competent in working okay. on that level? And I want to tell you one thing. Uh, I got to my registration before I even finished my BTEC. And the okay. person that interviewed me was Johan de Quirker. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> so I know the alternative routes, and that's, that's why I say, you know. No corruption involved there? <laughs> no. I didn't know I Johan that time. I gave him a good grilling, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think in the end, Jan and everybody else was a bit worried about me. <laughs> okay. Hey guys. No, thank you, guys. We... I think it's, so it's the TO section I must fill in and, and, no. and that and apply That's for the correct. return. Okay. okay. Remember when you're doing your application, the first five outcomes, you do not fill in on the normal form. You go to the alternative form. You fill that in. Okay. Okay. I, I wouldn't have remembered. Thank you. Because you fill in that, and then you go on further. You don't have to fill up all that uh, there about the designing and or anything like that, because you've already discussed it in your first outcomes. Then from there on, you go further down. Okay, okay. Michael. Thanks a lot, sir. Bye. Okay, good luck. Huh? Thanks. Bye. Mike, you wanted okay. to add? I see you've got a hand up. Yeah, thank you, Johan. Yes. Um, I would put my camera on, but I'm in the half dark because I'm a civil engineer and, you know, the electrical engineers have been letting us down of late every couple of hours, a few times during the day. Mm -hmm. But the, youngster, the, the discussion for those that came in late, the discussion on the international registration is something that I initiated with Johan earlier this morning. Um, I have assisted a youngster through oh, about two months ago, um, uh, international registration as a PR technologist. And hence, we started the discussion of his title. Whilst you were talking, I have spoken to him. He has just paid, six weeks ago, 4,500 rand. So it would appear that the 100 free applications have been exhausted. And EXA is now charging 4,500 rand for that international registration. So I just wanted to put that into the forum so that everybody isn't uh, confused thinking, oh, it's for free, when in actual fact, Right now, it's 4,500 rand. Oh, thanks a lot. That's very valuable information, Mike. And uh, if you want to add to any of the other discussions well, that we... Uh, just what, what, what's been said so far is, is exactly right. Um, uh, we went through the, uh, the, the process of getting a... It's, it's a, the last five or six years of your um, the, the work that you've done. You go through exactly like for your PR tech um, application. You go to an, uh, an interview, a review, 
you put together a presentation, you give them the 15 minutes, and then they ask you a whole bunch of questions. He was a young contracting engineer, and they asked him a lot of questions on design. And we go back this eternal debate of design or develop an engineering uh, solution to an engineering uh, problem. Um, but the reviewers and the moderators and assessors were obviously happy that he gave from a contracting point of view sufficient evidence of competence in the design or develop. And um, yeah, he's been successfully registered. And if he can figure out what his title is, he'll be a very happy individual, but it's 4,500 rand, just so that we're all up to date. Okay, thanks. Okay, sure. I'm gonna to have to leave because of load shedding. I'm gonna lose the signal just now, but thank you very much for, for the last hour. Um, thanks, thanks guys. And I will probably attend your future ones. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks a lot. No, you're most welcome. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for your contribution. Thank you. To fellow, you've got a hand up. You're most welcome to ask your question. You muted. You need to unmute yourself. To fellow, are you still with us? I think he's got a problem with the signal, most probably. I don't know. Okay, I see uh, Marubi asked there. He's got 14 years experience with the BTEC. And to fill in the TEO -E is TER. You fill in the TER because you've got your BTEC. TEO is for the people that have not got a BTEC and they're going through the alternative route. I've typed that there, but I'm just telling everybody there. Any other questions? I, I just want to comment on that. He says he wants the easy one. Let me tell you, there's no easy one. There's a lot of filling in these forms. There's a lot of work, and you need to be, you, you need to, to, to look at it very carefully. You fill it in, you read through it, you edit it, you make sure that it's right, <clears throat> that it's right, and uh, make sure that the language is right, the spelling is right. Uh, Make sure that it's concise because that you judged on that form. That 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 form is giving the assessors telling you who you are, telling them who you are. You they don't know you, so they can't read between the lines. So you have to be very very concise in what you say and be precise, and have someone, as Chris always say, have your biggest enemy read your form because he will give you criticism. Your friends will say, yeah, 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 that's okay. But your enemies, you're, you're the guy who's crit critical in the office, give it to him and he will tell you what is wrong. So uh, make sure that it, it's not an easy job. Chris, you always say it takes you 50 hours. It's, 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 uh, it's not a Saturday afternoon job after you've had a few beers. I've mm. seen an application that was done that way and we had all had to laugh at the, at the committee and, and it was turned down. Tefelo, are you mm. now ready to ask? Okay, good, good, good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. Uh, my internet is not stable, so I'm sorry for raising up a hand and down. No, that's fine. Um, I'm working as a assistant materials engineer. There is someone uh, who is my supervisor. So my role here, is to supervise the lab and going out to site and uh, check for completed elements and then come back and recommend for uh, accept or reject. So I want to know how to uh, come across the outcome one, two, and three in my situation. Okay. All right, let me explain the. You know, remember one thing I've always said, outcome one, two, three, nine and 10 are interlinked. Yes. Now you're working in a laboratory, you're going out to a soils laboratory, as I understand, you're working either on uh, roads or wherever, or you're just working on roads. Or, or on roads, on yeah, roads. Right. So you're assistant now at the moment. Now, yes. Now... You look at the material and you decide what you want to have to do there. Then you see the material is not according to spec. 
What do you do about it? Yes. You go and tell your supervisor it's not according to spec, or do you say, no, I'm going to come up with a solution or not, and how you rectify it. When you come up with your own solution and it's uh, and you come with a unique, unique solution, that is designing. If you're just okay. taking the samples and you're doing the tests and you walk away and you give it to your supervisor and tell him, no, it's not inspect this material. What did you say? He says, okay, thank you, and you walk out of the office. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you walk in there, you have to do your mindset change of your idea. You walk in there and you say, listen, yeah, Munir, this is out of spec, this material, but I've done this to get it into spec. Then you are designing. You understand? Okay. Then you okay. are designing. You're not going to just take the book, the guidelines that say, yes, now I'm designing, you know, according to the spec. There's something out of the spec, you come up with a solution. You think out of the box. That, okay. that will be come in your outcome one, two, three, and your nine and 10 is your decision and you're standing by your decision. So that will come out. If you show that, you can become registered as a technologist. So what I'm saying is, it's not basically what I'm saying to you and I'm telling everybody, this doesn't matter in which field of engineering you are. If you go and you're in a junior position or you're in a lower position, you're like assistant RE or a lab assistant, you know, manager and that's something like that. And you go and you work there, whatever you do, and you've got a problem, you don't go to your supervisor and say, we've got a problem. You go to your supervisor and say, this is a problem. This is how I sorted it out. Do you agree? Or this is how I want to sort it out. This is my test that I carried out. You will okay. say yes or no. Then you are basically designing. But if you're just okay. taking the information and give it to you and you fill in the form, that's not designing. Even a, a guy with no qualification, if you train him enough, he can do that work like that. But when you get a problem, you look at it and how you're going to solve it. That is designing. Okay. So if you, okay. De if you develop... Okay, the second... This if, yes. If you okay. develop a, 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 um, solutions, that is part of designing. So that, that is what you have to prove, that you develop solutions to problems. Uh which is part of designing because uh, if you register as professional engineer, uh, they do sometimes, sometimes they are very critical of people working in laboratories and, and you must make sure that you, you can convince them that you are working at, at, at the correct level. So uh, just make sure that you, that you can prove that. Okay. You the second okay. question? My second question is about um, these outcomes. We have outcome one to 11. And at the end of it, it, it is going to be signed by a, my mentor or my supervisor. If one the outcomes did not cover the one period that I am with that mentor or supervisor, uh, it will be possible for him or for her to sign it. Yes, your direct supervisor that's been working with you signs it. Because you can see, okay. even if you're uh, doing with another uh, per period, but he sees and he says, yes, I agree, the person, this applicant is ready to reg be registered. So okay. you will sign, he signs. So you don't go to each one that you would go in different period at all. Okay. You also direct supervisor that knows you, signs it off. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I will come back again. All right. All right. So, we, we hope to be back in two weeks' time again. You can, you can come and ask again. Yeah. Okay. I see Nati has talked to how, how much experience do you need for international technologies registration after BTEC qualification? After your BTEC qualification, you can't become international. You first have to get your uh, technologist registration, and then it's usually five years after that for international, if I remember right. Okay, and then I see, is right. there electromechanical discipline registration in EXA? If you apply by mechanical and you tell it's electro, they will get the people to interview you there accordingly. 
Okay. All right. I see LH is what left hand. Come in. Come in. Hello. Greetings, everyone. Yes. Who am I speaking to? I don't want to call you LH. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm Luando. Luando. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Luando. Yes. Um, yeah. I have a question, eh? Uh, but like my situation is this, um, I got my B tech in 2019, January, 2019. And I started working in January, 2020. So uh, yes. the three years, uh, the three years minimum that EXA always talk about, is it three years of work experience or the qualification because I was planning to submit my, my report uh, towards the end of the year, maybe around September or November, cause like I have started with compiling my TERs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right, it's basically, it's a combination of the two. Cause if you look at your application there, especially on your TER that you're filling in there, or not your T or your summary, you have to dis disclose periods where you were unemployed, where you didn't work. So if you didn't work for a year and then you worked uh, later on, you know, you, you got your diploma, and, I mean, your BTEC now, and you go in a year later and you go and work, you take like a holiday for a year, 12 months or it's due to uh, situations out of our control, like unemployment or whatever. That, that year that you're not working, that can't be counted into your registration period. Because we so will pick words, it up. You should not apply for registration before the end of this year, because then it counts 2020, 21 and 22. Uh, now I must warn any everybody that uh, EXA is not forced to, re to, to register you uh, after the minimum period. Uh, so the three years is a minimum period of which we usually say that usually a person takes three years to reach the right level of, of competence uh, and, and he, 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 he learns a lot in, 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 in practice. Uh, so sometimes people don't get the right experience to the right level for, for registration as a technologist, and they need more time for that. So make sure that you, your experience is at the right level. Um, I, I appreciate your problem in that for a year you were unemployed, or you, you probably were looking for a job, and I know that the jobs are tight and you, you had to take what you, what you, what you got. Um, and maybe you're not uh, fortunate to be working, uh, to, to be doing all the things that you would like to do to be able to get registered. So look, look very carefully at the requirements of EXA and then look at what you've been doing before you, reg before you apply. Rather wait another six months or a year before you apply and make sure that you are working at the right level uh, because as, as, you, uh, as you progress after your BTEC, obviously in your job, you get more and more responsibility and you, you want to be working at the, at, at, at the responsible level. Uh, make sure when you, app, you, you write your application, say what you have done. Don't describe the project. Describe what you have done to, to <clears throat> in a project that is the important thing and describe how what responsibility were delegated to you that is what what is required that uh, uh, it's always nice to read that someone says i was given full responsibility for this job although my boss was still signing off uh, the buck stopped with me i i was I, I had to take responsibility and if anything went wrong i would be fired in other words you would you were delegated full responsibility uh, as, as much as your boss could delegate to you. So just keep that in mind. Uh, thank you, sir. 
Uh, um, hello, thank you for taking my question. I was asking, um, I have almost 14 years experience. I wrote that on the, the chat, but I got out because of network issues and then I didn't hear if you answered or not. So if I have more than 10 years experience, do I fill in the form of TER or I can jump and fill in TEO? Do you have a BTEC? Yes, I have a BTEC with the 14 years. My BTEC was 2008. You fill I in the TER. TER, yeah. Because the TEO is for people with no, uh, you know, they haven't got a BTEC. They're doing it on the alternative route. Okay. Oh. Because they're doing the alternative route. So they fill in the alternative. They're going through the experience of learning where you have got your BTEC. So you fill in the TER form. But hopefully by now you have uh, reached a mature level of responsibility and uh, so that you would be able to fly through the, the registration. Uh, good luck for you. <laughs> I just don't know how to fill in that form. It always confuses me. Well, Which one? You, you fill in the, the form. The whole answer form. You, no, you, that's why you must come and sit and listen to this and go on the, on YouTube and pick up what I've spoken there. I've been speaking about this now uh, it's over two, two years. years now. More than just over two years we've been speaking about this. But, but What is your YouTube channel? We'll try and help you to... to, to yeah. uh, to 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 uh, to fill in the right things. You can just come and ask the questions, and we'll uh, and, and join the mm. join the IPET uh, uh, the registration advice group and ask your questions there as well. And um, we'll try and help you and guide you as much as we can. Uh, within reason, we cannot write your stuff for you, but uh, we'll, we'll guide you to do to to write it. I know it's a it's it's a it's a big big mountain to climb if this thing looks uh, uh, daunting, but you just have a go at it, write it a draft, and review it again, and you'll find that actually you've probably got all all that's required because of your years of experience. Sorry, Johan, Jonathan. Yes, Jonathan. Mm. I think the lady was also asking for where she can find the previous recordings. No, yeah, no, that chicken I wanted to say on professionalcpd.co.za. Let me go and share the screen for that. Uh, yeah, I'll go to the to the to the slide where she can can see that. I'll share the screen. The gentleman said he has a YouTube channel. I meant that one. No, no, not YouTube. They put a lot of the talks I did on YouTube. So you can see it there. You can type in iPad and you should find some of the talks there too. Thank you. I'm just trying to get... A, a, a I see a lot of people are, are sending it, it around. But I want to tell you a nice little story. We have been doing this now for just over two years. And there was somebody who they called Baggy. He said he went and he did what we what I've been talking about. And he got it on this professional CPD and also on YouTube, some of the uh, you know presentations. And he did it. And he wrote to us in the group on the on the one chat group and said he felt confident and he, even if he passes or not, you know, gets registered, he feels satisfied because of the information that was given. And last week, he actually sent a, on the group to say he's now registered. So you just follow, and we will try and help you as much as we can. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So in other so words, don't you don't be shy. Sure. PS, uh, professional CPD, .co.za and you go and look for the for the iPad uh, sign there, this one on the top left hand corner here. Look for that, and that is the ones that that's for free that you can uh, look through all of them. As I said, there's more than twenty at this stage, and uh, which you uh, 
number of them has been repeated. So you're most welcome to go there and it's for free. Go and help yourself mm. there. Okay, I'm going to stop the sharing now. Okay, Jonathan just mentioned there is an iPad YouTube and you can get it. Channel. I don't know who put it up, but it's fine. It's a free service we're doing. Did you put it up, Jan? So it's probably, fine. It's probably Jan for Skullquake. It's, it's working on it. Yeah. That. Anyway, me and Johan are the I watch YouTube actors. There, Johan. <laughs> Uh, by the way, uh, Chris, uh, Johan mm. Foskogwag said to me this morning that he has put up the, um, the whole of the uh, education conference, which discusses all the, the, the uh, education uh, requirements for registration as a technologist and technician and engineer. Uh, that okay. whole conference is, is on, on his website now, that uh, professional CPD website. You can go for it if you, but unfortunately, you will have to pay for that one. But it's a whole day conference. And so you will be able to get uh, uh, one CPD point for it. Uh, I'm still waiting for EXA to give me the okay that they've uploaded it. But we have asked for uh, EXA CPD uh, finalizing, but we've got the, the number already. So, uh, we will be putting it up within the next week. I hope to be sending out the, the certificates for the conference. Mm. Okay. So, I will take another few questions. I see the website is on. It's a youtube.com and the channel, and it is on the chat group so that people can copy it if they want to. The iPad, you know, there on the YouTube, so you can, uh, there's all the talks that are there, basically there. Thank you. I, I, I didn't uh, have that one. I've definitely no, I didn't know it about myself that. as well. No, Any I case. didn't even know about it, but it's good. Any other questions? Uh, sorry about that. But uh, what I'm saying is it's good. So there is a way uh, it helps the people. You can go through these uh, talks and that, and it will help you definitely. Because I, another thing happened about five weeks ago. We had a, a person asking questions. And two weeks ago, the person that was asking the questions on here was in front of me for an interview. I don't see your face, so I don't. I recognize this name, but uh, it does happen, and I do. And I also see some of the guys when I do assessment. I do pick up their names here, and I see it does help them to get through. So you guys, you can use it to help yourselves to go through. Just remember, we can give all the advice that we want to in these talks. But that last bit of the, you know, the gate to open, to climb over the mountain, to get to the top, is where you do it yourself, is your interview. So prepare for the interviews, prepare for everything there, and do not preempt questions. So what you do is you go, if you know your subject, nobody will get you there. So what we do is we just want to see, are you competent? And is this your work that you're talking about? That's it. Okay, any questions further? And if you didn't write your own report, then you should be very worried in your interview. Yeah, I want to tell you, everybody, if me and Johan are working on the same project, Johan will see, write his report in his style. He will see something out of that there. And I will also write something differently. So we will never be the same. If I take Johan's report and go for the interview, I will fail. And Johan takes my report and do the interview. He will also fail. But if he takes his own work, he will never fail. Okay. Well, guys, if there's no more questions, we can have an early night tonight. I... Uh... My load shedding is finished, so I can go and make dinner. 
Uh, my wife should be home uh, soon. And uh, in my house, I do the dinner because she's working full time and uh, I'm working from home. So is, is there any more say questions? I Leon, don't see what we say, your wife domesticated you for a change. <laughs> As I no, said, we, we're no, doing we washing it. dishes and that we, what you call, we've been doing engineering work and shoving water and soap around and doing chemical engineering while we were doing dishes. <laughs> Jonathan, you no, wanted to say? We're going to switch over to the cooking show now. Just give us five minutes. We're done with registration. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a good, That's a good idea. <laughs> Well, no, no, it's not a cooking session. It's a domesticating session. The fellow come in. <laughs> okay, my last question about filling in TER. Uh, I just want to understand very clearly about uh, the nature of renewal experience. Uh, is it is based on academic or practical? Okay, the TER is based on your practical. What have you been trained yes. to do there? Because, you know, your supervisor can't tell you, you know, he can't sign for you that you've passed this subject or that subject. So what it okay. is, it's to do with your practical work. You'll see, you will start in your different degrees, uh, your level of degrees of responsibility. So you might start at A, then you'll go later and progress to D, E, you know, you're going ahead and then you come to level E. Degree level E. So that's what we want to see also. Okay. Okay. The fellow, all you need to do is take the forms, read all the background information, all those forms that, uh, that we listed there today in, in, in the, uh, uh, I think it was about the third or the fourth slide. But then you take the form, the application form, you read what it says, and you, you write. And you just write what it's what is asked, and uh, as I said, if you have if you get stuck, ask us. We'll try and help you, and uh, explain to you okay, what is required. You. Okay, I just want to say one thing, and uh, I'm going to mention it again. Johan has mentioned there's no quick fix to fill in this form. I've always said it takes you more than fifty hours to do it properly. So you mustn't be shy of spending time on it. Remember, this is to do with your future. If you go for an interview or you say you're building a car and you were rebuilding a car, you're going to rebuild it perfectly or you're just going to spend two hours and say it's built. It will not last long. So think of it that way. Okay. Well, guys, I see we've lost about 10 people already because of load shedding. We've got... Mm. Uh, uh, company shedding here, but uh, thanks mm. everybody for for joining us tonight. Um, again, from Institute of Professional Engineering Technologists, we do this to try and help you guys. You're most welcome to join us. Uh, if you have a national uh, a BTEC and you're not registered yet, you can join for free. In the the first year of membership is free. And if you uh, are registered with EXA, you get, uh, and you're a member of IPET, you, you get a discount from EXA, which is bigger than your IPET membership. So IPET membership is also free for that, uh, in, in that case. So an IPET is the only organization that, that's only for professional technology, more for technologists, not only professionals graduate and professional technologists and even students. And uh, if uh, we, we like you to be, uh, to get involved. And um, if you have any questions or something, uh, or you something you want us to do for you, you must say so and we try and do that. We do CPD, uh, some of it is for free, uh, but or most of the CPD is, is, is affordable. Uh, some of the other organizations charge uh, three to four thousand rand for a day's CPD. One point, we we try and keep it under a thousand rand because we try and keep it acceptable. 
and uh, um, so uh, that is what we do for you. And um, you, as I said, go to www.ipet.org.za. Go and look there, and uh, you can apply there, and um, uh, you're most welcome. Thank you, and good night.